Welcome to Electron Line. Sometimes they will give you a polynomial with four terms and ask you to factor that. You go, well, wait a minute. I know how to factor the difference of squares. I know how to factor polynomials with three terms. But what about four terms? Well, the technique that we use here is grouping. What we do is we, for example, take the first two terms and group them together. And one way to make it easier to see what we're trying to do is to simply put like a little bracket underneath it like that which means we're going to group these two together and now we're also going to group these two together. All right, the next step is to factor something that's common out of the first two. For example, we have an x squared there, we have a 2x there. You can see then that x is common. That means you can factor out an x from the first two terms and write it as follows. x times x plus 2. Now we're going to add to that, we still have the plus here, what well, we can factor out of here. Notice we have a 9x and an 18. What's common between those two is the number 9. I can factor out a 9. When I do so, I get 9 times x plus 2. Always quickly to see if we did this correctly, you can multiply this back in and see if you get what you started with. x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x, so that's correct. 9 times x gives me 9x. 9 times 2 gives me 18, so that's correct as well. Now you group them together again like this. You look at this term and you look at this term. Now you look at these two and see what is common between them. And it becomes quite obvious to see that you have an x plus 2 on the left side and you have an x plus 2 on the right side, which means we can factor out an x plus 2 out of both of these terms. When we do that, we get x plus 2 and then we write what we have left. We have an x over here and we have a plus 9 over there which is left. And this is now the factored form of the original problem. Notice again what we do is we first group them together in groups of two. We see what's common out of the first group and here we can see that x is common. We see what's common out of the second group. We see that 9 is common and then when we look at these as follows, we put little brackets underneath it again to make it more visual. We realize that x plus 2 is common to x plus 2 over here, which means it can be factored out, and we're left with an x plus 9. Now, it actually doesn't matter which way we group them together. For example, I can group the first and the third one together, and the second and the fourth one together. Let me try that to see if it really makes no difference. All right, so I'm going to rewrite this as x squared plus 9x plus 2x plus 18. So now I've put the 9x here and the 2x over there. I can group these two together and group these two together exactly the same way. What is common in the first group? Again, the number x, or I should say the variable x is common. Let's put an equal sign here just to make sure that I realize that this is equal to that. And here to make sure that we understand that these are equal, this is equal to this, which is equal to that. It's a better form. It's bad form not to put equal signs there. So here we factor out an x, so we get x plus 9. And here we're going to factor out the number 2, which is common. So plus 2 times x plus 9 is the remainder. Again, we put brackets underneath here. And notice we have an x plus 9 and an x plus 9. We can factor out an x plus 9. So this is equal to x plus 9 times what we have left, which is an x plus 2. And notice we end up with the exact same answer that we got over here, except x plus 9 is written first and x plus 2 is written next. But it doesn't matter what the order is. It's exactly the same answer. And so you can see that it doesn't really matter which way you group the terms together. You'll always get the correct answer if you don't make a mistake along the way. And that's how it's done.